Hello YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I've picked a break in the weather here. It's been one of those funny days where we've gone from full sun to absolute full-on rain within five minute periods and that's happened about four or five times today putting an end to any farm work I was planning to do. But um, this was forecast and so when there was sunny or cloudy weather forecast I pulled out all stops and managed to mow 30 hours in three days and that was an effort. Uh, block two which I'm walking near now wasn't one of the blocks that I did mow it was short enough to uh, to do basically but you know the idea is get the grass down as much as you can for the pre-harvest preparation. Stage one of that um, will be sweeping which is basically uh, a harvester sweeper, sweeping out things from between the middle of the tree into the middle of the row. Stage two is mulching, and uh, mulching involves taking the middle of the row, everything you've swept into it, plus everything that's already there, and uh, flattening it all out and beating it all into a pulp. I've done a, a video on that previously. And there's also a third step, and it, it may actually be applied in front of the other two, but it depends really a bit on the weather and what can be done when. But the other step is herbiciding. And that is one of those controversial issues where I sort of go against what my agronomist wants me to do. He doesn't want any herbicide sprayed as part of the harvest preparation. But sometimes the practicalities of being a sometimes absent farmer get in the way and I'm just not there to constantly mow uh, as much as I need to in order to get um, the grass down enough to harvest. So um, it, uh, it seems that herbiciding will be part of what I do this season. Uh, there's plenty to herbicide as you can see from the, the weeds at the opening here of the block. Um, the peacocks like it, they're having a nice forage through the uh, forage through the grass picking up some insects and things that have come through in the rain and uh, it's uh, it's looking pretty healthy the trees are looking pretty healthy there's a couple of early nuts on the ground although I suspect they're ones that have got a bit of husk spot or disease um, they haven't really started falling heavily and we don't expect them to fall you know in any particular numbers till about oh late February and the first harvest may well be in March. But when it comes to herbiciding, what options does a farmer have other than doing it and not doing it? Well, the main options are how widely you apply it. That is, do you just do the tree row here and either side of the tree row? Oh, here we go, here's a nut or two. So we are starting to get a couple of nuts fall. That's a good one. Um, or you can do a wider band, which will obviously give you greater coverage and greater control over, over the areas next to the trunk where a lot of nuts can fall. Um, obviously, the narrower the band, the more grass you retain. And, you know, I must say, it is nice to retain as much grass as possible. I've got younger blocks with good grass coverage and these older blocks with marginal grass coverage and I have to say the good grass coverage blocks there is no root exposure or sign of erosion in the trees at all. I think that's for two reasons one is the grass keeps the soil there and two is by mowing it and throwing those clippings underneath the trees you're slowly not not in you know not in enormous amount but you are slowly building up the soil through mulching and you know eventually the grass which does decay down will help add to the soil matter and promote worms promote moisture retention um, all those sorts of good things so yeah the second or the other the other big thing to choose is the chemical um, the standard go-to for macadamia farmers has been roundup for a long time. Why? Well, it's the oldest, it's effective, it kills the grasses from the root up, 
and they don't come back, or at least it's only new seeds that do come back rather than the existing plants that were sprayed. Also, the coverage doesn't have to be that great. You know, a single drop is going to kill your average weed. A um, bit of controversy as, as to whether or not it actually harms the macadamia tree. The consensus is that if it does harm them, it doesn't harm them much. It certainly doesn't kill macadamia trees, although it could probably do some harm to, to saplings. Um, the other choice, or a newer choice, is a chemical called BASTA, made by BASF. It's not what's called a systemic herbicide. It will basically burn a, a, burn a weed down to the ground and not really affect the roots or anything under the ground. Generally that will kill the weed, um, but not have any negative effects that Roundup is rumoured to have, including what's called chelating minerals, that is, you know, making minerals near the roots of the dead weed unavailable to plants, um, which isn't terribly productive for a macadamia farmer who wants as many minerals to be available to the uh, to the trees as possible. Now, Basta, as you could imagine, it's newer, it's more expensive. I don't know if it's still under patent uh, or whether there's generics for it yet. If there's no generics, it's definitely going to be more expensive. And you do need more thorough coverage to get that better outcome. So... Um, there may be other herbicides that are developed. There's, um, I know there's a selective one called Verdict, which will get rid of some grasses and not others. But your farm basically has to be the right kind of grasses for that to work. And uh, I'm not one of those lucky people that has uh, really identifiable grasses. I've got the, uh, I've, I've got what's called a varied ground cover. Apparently, that's a good thing. It doesn't always look like a good thing. It certainly doesn't look like it's uh, in order. So how do we apply this herbicide? Well, had the weather been better, I could have probably videoed that for you. So far, the contractors have just uh, brought the um, tractor that it's going to be used, and, uh, and they've just left it here for a, a better day. And so we have a uh, Massey Ferguson... I th it's a real uh, a real old chestnut looks like a um looks like a, a good old reliable tractor as a lot of the Massey Fergusons are behind it is a sylvan spray unit I have one of these myself I think they're about 400 liters um it has a spray gun attached to it at the moment that an operator of a tractor can actually shoot things with um however the way they apply this is with a boom which is basically a metal rod that runs behind the, um, the sprayer and then just drips uh, or it sprays um, herbicide downwards to the ground, not upwards, um, as it goes along the rows. And obviously we've got to wait for some dry weather to do that or else it's going to be, it's going to be ineffective. Um, so it's a kind of, uh, you know, trade-off that we have to do. It's one of those, you know, conflicts in agronomy where, you look at the benefit of the trees and you look at the benefit of the actual production uh, and in general most farmers still do apply herbicide um, particularly where they've got you know where they're following the rest of the good practices is which is to have a ground cover there's plenty of farms you can see around eureka um, rosebank the older sorts of areas even Danoon where they don't need to use herbicide but that's because there is nothing living under the trees and um, frankly that's even worse than using herb than using herbicide so these are the trade-offs we face um, we have more wet weather coming uh, the end of La Nina is not done with us yet and um, apparently there's a fair bit more to go I know the soil is pretty much soaking because even though we've just had rain on and off today, I've actually seen for the first time water sitting on the surface of the soil over here. And given how freely red soil drains, that is a very rare sight. The, the soil must absolutely be saturated for that to happen. And uh, the other thing it tells me, of course, is that despite the fact I've mown most of the farm, 
That task will once again be presenting itself in a couple of weeks' time, and I will be back on the mower, giving it a good workout. Anyway, these are the things you sign up for as a macadamia farmer, whether you're part-time or full-time at it. Um, it's still very enjoyable, and it's still absolutely wonderful to wander out amongst your trees, particularly at the start of harvest season, where everyone's full of anticipation uh, as to uh, what would happen. Um, still no word on the price of macadamias for this season, but uh, my contact, my growers liaison, uh, tells me that it's only like one or two weeks away before we get that news. So stay tuned. I will keep you informed and I hope you have a good day, whatever you're doing. See you soon. Bye.